thought of my life was kinda rough, I had an awful battle The doctor set my parents down and said my life was fragile Perspective is the game, I guarantee the name Just put your head down, do the work and everything will change Sipping tea, helping feels, yeah that's what I wanted Being patient, hell the tricky if I'm being honest See what carry me, put some positivity, yeah it's that kind of swirl, it's that kind of, it's that signature at the end kind of shit. What's good everybody, it's tea time with B-Time, 902, May 20th. We're in it now. We are fully in quarantine now, now it's real life. Now regular life is weird. I uh, hope everybody's super well, really appreciate you being on with me. Uh, just great show yesterday, let's see if we can match it. Dustin on the ones and twos, Dustin how are you my friend? Excellent. Excellent. Um, anything interesting? Um, I'm trying to see if the LinkedIn comments are. Oh yes, LinkedIn. Here. Big shout out to LinkedIn. I know LinkedIn update. I don't see the comments in here. Though. I don't see them either. Looks like a huge fail once again for the dust. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. You saw it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. there they are. There we go. Tariq, the first LinkedIn comment I've seen. Big shout out to Christopher Gonzalez. What is up, LinkedIn? You oh. are in the. That's a. That's a. That was a Periscope. There we go. <laughs> Gonzalez doesn't have a. A lot of the LinkedIn's may not have logos. Oh, there she is. Anne Marie Lavelle. Good morning. Good morning. LinkedIn is now in the building on the public They're chats. I'm excited about that. There we go. Twitch with Matt Shull. Facebook, Instagram. Before we get into this, please. Oh, Instagram. Big shout out to Instagram because you know we go ghetto with it because it doesn't tap with StreamYard. This platform we use, which is remarkable, but. Sanan, I think, holds it up. So big shout out to everybody on Instagram. I love you. Um, so now I'm, you know, now we're live on LinkedIn, Twitch, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and YouTube. All comments enabled. Instagram is the only live place we're at where the comments are not enabled. Correct? Yep. All right. Uh, let's get into the show. Rudy from LinkedIn. Look at the LinkedIn fam. Let's get the LinkedIn. Everyone, LinkedIn, share this. Share this live, please. Let's get the LinkedIn share volume going. Let's get into share mode, everybody in general. All right, let's get this going. Yeah, Rick and Thaddeus, good. what's good? Yeah, how you doing? Hey, what's going on, Gary? Good morning. Good morning to you, gentlemen. Thanks for being on. Hey, thank definitely. you for having us. Definitely. Um, what's so, cooking? Man, we we started making beats and uh, selling them online back in 2011. Uh, kind of just building a fan base, um, growing a solid income. And over the years, we started to become one of the top sellers online, landing some placements um, eventually with Tierra Wack, Bad Bunny, Juice World, And um, through that, you know, we got, you know, I'd say a solid, solid base, probably 20, 30,000 customers over the years um, and wanted to add something to them. What would you recommend the new artists do in terms of non-music content? Non-music. Important. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, I can't believe you guys just brought this up. Literally, we're chopping up a business uh, at Vaynerland last night, and I talked about, we were talking about artists, and, you know, as, as you two know, me, Mike Boyd, a lot of us, we spend a lot of time in this space, but we're not looking to start a label or, or, or go into management, but we did get into this conversation of, like, how multi-dimensional artists are and need to be to really take it to the next level. And, and I think any artist in the world that can, that can do other shit needs to. Right. Right, like, like if you're capable of being funny on TikTok, if you're a supermodel looking person, if, if you're funny and you can do Instagram, co- if you can do a podcast, I mean, I mean, look at Joe Budden, like, right? Like, like his podcast absolutely gives him unlimited leverage. If he was in the mood to drop a project, it would matter, right? Look at, look at Khaled. Khaled's entire, Khaled's made hundreds of millions of dollars on the back of a five day execution on Snapchat. So of course, of course. I mean, you know, and that's something we've always, enamored and 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 put on a pedestal. J-Lo, Beyonce, people that could do more, right? You know, people that could do more. So, I mean, I, I actually would argue the debate in 20 years will be, should any artist just do music? Yeah, right. Like, it's, yeah. almost, like, it's almost like the reverse. I, I, you know, the internet just creates obnoxious levels of opportunity. You guys mm-hmm. lived it, I lived it. Like, people don't get it. Like. You look at Latin Trap, you look at Bad Bunny, Balvin, you know, Setch, all that, that whole movement, right? Like, Rugatone, like, 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 you know, I, 
it doesn't happen without the internet. Right. I mean, True. I mean, the record late, like like MTV didn't want to play Michael Jackson. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, like because you know racism, uh, subjective calls. I'll give you another classic one. The person that ran CBS or whatever the network Gilligan's Island on was on, his wife, like loved some show that nobody gave a fuck about. They canceled it when they unveiled the fall schedule in 1958 or 62 or whatever the fuck that was. She she went ham, and her fucking husband kicked out Gilligan's Island and put her bullshit show in. That is the reason there aren't a hundred more episodes of Gilligan's Island. Crazy, that's wild. That, that, that doesn't wild. that 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 doesn't happen. That doesn't happen in the internet. We can all do. Everybody watching this morning can can do, and um, and and should. And so if you're an art, and, and now that artists, big shout out to like you know, Pharrell, you know, Pharrell, <laughs> and you know by making nerd culture or other, you know, big shout out to fucking, you know, Andre 3000, like, you know, the culture now lets you be anything. You wanna be into fucking some dorky shit? That was unacceptable in 1994. Now you can do anything, which which then means you could do anything, right? Yeah, like, right. like Tyler, the creator, Pharrell, you know, Lil Yachty, that shit doesn't fly in 1996 hip hop, it was narrow. Right. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. now you can do anything. So if you're silly on TikTok, but you but you fucking talk hard lyrics from the south side of Atlanta on Spotify, you can actually get away with that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah, you can. So, so that's the answer. All right, man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. I so wish much. you guys nothing but the best. That. Take care, Childish Gambino. That was a great shout out. That's another great call. Let's keep it going. <laughs> Hi, Carrie. Hi, Hi, Gary. I'm uh, Carrie B from New Jersey. I love that. What part of Jersey? I'm in Red Bank, New Jersey. Great part of New Jersey. Love it. So, um, I'm so excited to be here. I've been following you for a long time. So thank you for, thank you. for having me. So um, I'll get to it. So I am the chief executive groupie of uh, Brand Groupies. We're a full service uh, social media and PR agency based in Red Bank. And, um, you know, a little backstory, I was PR director for many uh, corporate fashion brands in the city. Then I became an entrepreneur. I had a children's uh, rock and roll themed play space in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Then moved back to uh, New Jersey to raise my family and started Brand Grippy. So, so passionate about entrepreneurs, um, small business owners. And I did everything I could, Gary, for four years um, to help small business owners, mastermind groups, started a podcast because of you, um, strategy sessions, websites. But after four years, I was still alone, you know, with freelancers. And so this year I made the decision to scale and focus um, primarily on B2B um, uh, service brands in okay. AEC industry. So 20 to $30 million companies and just focus on PR and social. So I hired a VP of public relations, amazing. However, I am doing all the social myself. And um, my question to you is in 2020, where should I focus my time? I wanna be like 10 steps ahead of my client. Link editor. LinkedIn. LinkedIn, okay. LinkedIn. And I mean like, Obsessively, mm -hmm. okay. especially. I mean, if you're going after twenty, thirty million dollar a year B two B players, you know what's going to happen. You've been around the block for four mm -hmm. years. They're going to look for business results. Mm -hmm. And you know, as fun as like making five TikTok videos is going to be, that's not going to lead to a lot of business for that business in comparison to a monster understanding, best in class of LinkedIn. Yeah, okay. you know that's that's the game. Like you have to be the best at the ads. You have to be the best at the content. You have to be the best at understanding who the influencers on LinkedIn are and how you can do business with them. You have to f understand every nuance, every you know comment, you know comment culture. Like you know back to the thank you economy. It's where like all five of my books kind of play out. It's jab 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 right hook and the thank you economy and crush it because you got to convince all your clients, either them or somebody that works for them, needs to be the face, and you got to do a podcast and put out content. But I would say ninety percent of your energy, based on who you're targeting, needs to be on LinkedIn. Ninety. Okay, and should I grind? Like, should I just continue to grind myself, or should I hire anyone right now? Or, I mean, look, if you can afford it, if you can afford it, you can absolutely, uh, you know, go that route. But if you're, if you're still in that early stage, which I think you are, and mm -hmm. plus, I'd love for you to really know it, like really know it, mm -hmm. like you know, like the thing that separates me from everybody else is I'm an actual practitioner yeah. against the people I compete against. The CEOs of big agencies 
don't even fucking have a TikTok account or an Instagram account. Don't even have one. You know, like, and so, you know, they're not making content. They're not living that life. And so, you know, that's, uh, that's the reality of it. Okay. All right. right. So I'll go deep in uh, LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Gary. You're welcome. Good day. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, one of my dad's, uh, my dad's got some landscaping going on here. So yeah. I was about to ask, like, what is that noise? <laughs> it's noise, Dustin. Real life happens around here. Social distancing landscaping for pops. All right, let's keep it going. Gary, what's up, man? What's good, Dave? Good, man. I'm uh, doing well. So uh, first, I just got to say thank you, man. Like, I know you hear that a lot, but like, for real, for real, like uh, a lot of stuff that you've put out, books, the content deck, like completely changed my business and helped me help a lot of people, which I'll kind of make clear in my question. So for real, thank you. Um, to do it, brother. But yeah, man, it's crazy. You were talking about the humanity footprint yesterday. Like that's, that's what my question is kind of about. And uh, that's pretty much what I, I started my business. So can I give you like a little bit of context? Cause it's kind of a big situation. So my whole life has been in the sport of gymnastics, right? I competed. I was i uh, I'm a coach. I went to physical therapy school and I have pretty much spent all of my time working as a medical provider and also as a uh, coach, right? So 2013, I started an online educational business because the sport just desperately needs like help for new ideas and working in the medical field. It's like important that people know what the new science is and stuff. So I really just did it because I wanted to help people because like a lot of kids in the sport get hurt, overuse injuries. Like there's a lot of concerns about like pushing young kids for like their Olympic dream and college scholarships and stuff. So yeah, it just started like kind of as a fun thing. And it blew up because of, again, like the content model helped me get more material. I'm not a businessman. I'm not a marketer. I'm a I'm a practitioner in physical therapy. That's what I'm good at. So um, talk, to just, me about so- talk to me about soft tissue. Yeah, man. So, all right. I had this at the end of my things as a thank you. But when I texted my question in, um, I'm re- like my, my shit is like back pain, shoulder pain. Like that's what I'm good at. So the offer is on the table. If you ever want help with your back, like I'm more than happy to do it. No strength attached. But soft tissue is one of the most important things. There's a couple other things. Super, that are- super underrated, right? For real. Yeah. I think like a lot of people don't realize it's one of those things that like creeps up on you and like you don't realize it's a problem and then it's a problem. Like, and you don't even realize it's happening. Exactly. Yeah. So a Until lot of people- Until you actually go at it. You're like, whoa, why does that hurt so much? Yeah, for sure. So there's stuff between like, you know, soft tissue is really important. Like- What else do you love? Um, so changing up your movement is super important. Like if you- uh, Sitting's not bad for you. It's just reversing like what you're doing. Like, so like laying on your stomach is really important for a while. If, like you sit all day, like I used to blow up my back because I would read a lot. And so laying on your stomach for a couple of emails or like doing some back bends and stuff, that's and real- are you, And are you also like a personal trainer? Yeah, so I'm a I'm a gymnastics coach, a strength and conditioning coach, and then I have a I have my doctorate in physical therapy, and I'm a sports third certified therapist. Yeah. So like, so you know, one thing that's been running through my mind, I'm in love with what's going on with my situation right now. I had Mike Vacanti for two years, then I had Jordan yeah. for three years, then I had Mike yeah. again. But I do think about like, man, I should probably start to get to know a person or two in case Mike. Like, would you ever live with me for a year or two? Probably not live with because I got a ton of stuff going on on my own, but totally um, get it. we just built a telehealth infrastructure at our, we have a really a big. No, I need living. Yeah. No, I keep doing I, your thing. All right. Go into your question. Couldn't live with you. But yeah. So long story short is um, uh, I've worked all three jobs for seven years, just like going hard because uh, it's just like a rare opportunity to help a lot of people, you know? And so I feel like the sport is changing and I want to kind of capitalize on that. And so um, things were going well for four years, grew real awesome. But then in 2016, I don't know if you know about this, but we had like the biggest scandal in sport history. Yeah. Right. The Michigan so, State shit. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. Like the doctor and all that stuff. So, you know, the whole world got tipped on its head and it was awful. And it was like, it cut real deep for me and a lot of my friends because I, I coach a lot of young athletes and I, I'm a medical provider. I work with these athletes. So I was lucky that the work that I had done put me in a position where like here in the country, international, like a lot of people, like, snap of a finger, like 10,000 eyeballs on me asking if I could help. And I had been putting out tons of free content because I kind of follow what you believe. And we do monetize, like I have like some courses and stuff, an online membership group, but it's always been like bare minimum just to do the right thing for me. Um, And so it happened and turned over. And like, now it's like a huge, a huge thing is like, everyone's changing. There's a lot of abuse, like scandals that are going on now. They're resolving. There's so many good people that want to do the right thing, but don't have information. So that's where I feel like my humanity footprint is to like make a dent in that for the positive. And so I've always had this question, but it's more now because of like the severity of what's changing is what, like, what's the balance between I, I want to give it all away for free because I I don't pull money from the business. I live off my physical therapy career and my coaching career and like just live real boring versus like, 
holding on to the money, selling the content so that I can use that to like hire people or like, you know. Both, get- are, both are fine. Like, you know, I know that I sometimes over demonize selling content, mm. but it's because so many people sell bad content mm-hmm. and, and even worse, so many people sell content that they rip off from the internet somewhere else and they just try to do funnels and do marketing. If yeah. your, your intent is clearly good, mm. like like I might decide to sell content one day because I feel great about it. It's don't sell something you don't believe in. Yeah. And also recognize, don't be mad at the world when they're not buying your shit when they can go Google it. Totally. So does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, I guess to follow up, it's more like on the actual tactics of like, if I do hold on to money, which I'm fine with, and I don't mind charging for like consulting services or like my physical therapy services we charge for. Um, but like when I have money, like, do I put it into like hiring people? Like I hired, I did it all for myself for six years. Then I hired somebody last year just to go bigger, but it's more like, like into finances of that versus like, if I give away the information, like, and it's all out there, like it's clearly going to start to like chip away at my bottom line and stuff. And so I struggle no, personally not. with no, it's not because it's going to lead to leverage, which may mm. turn you into monetizing it in a different way. Mm. Yeah. If, if the world loves you for giving away great information, it, if uh, <laughs> if uh, if uh, if the world loves you for giving away great information, yeah. You, and back to like soft tissue, if you decide to come out with your own rolling ball with your beautiful bald head on it, you're gonna sell. You're gonna make more money on that fucking ball than you're gonna make on the fucking information. Yeah. And what are your thoughts on like giving away content and then and monetizing just consulting services? Cause I thought about that. I'm like obsessed with that. Yeah. Like, would that be a better option? Cause I could, I've thought about dissolving my, uh, like the medical courses, you kind of need to have those live or in person. Cause it's like a safety thing. You have to know how to of treat course, something well, of course. but like on my coaching education group, I could just give everything away for free and be like, all right, if you want to do, you know, like a, a university, like wants me to come in or like a, a country, like wants me to fly over and do it. Like I could do that, but then I struggle with like- It's short and long term. It's short and long term, right? It's also against how you want to make your money. There is no right answer to this. There's what's right for you. Okay. Honestly, which is liberating, right? Yeah. You know, but you also have to be good at it. You might be way, way, way better at doing consulting and personal and Mm. then speaking and maybe creating a a, a roller product. You know that stick that bends, the white stick? You know, like, again, like I think there's a lot of opportunity, you know, back to like, like, I'm not kidding. Like, if you're so great, which I kind of weirdly think you are, I literally just offered you like the like the biggest thing in my world around fitness on Thank intuition. You. Yeah. Make, I mean, I think you can make a hundred thousand dollars a year on a mat that people mm-hmm. lay down and put their and lay on their stomach on. Yeah. It's kind of like me with wine. Like, if people are gonna buy a mat anyway. Yeah. And if you're the guy that gave like people like Dave, do you drink wine? Tell the truth now, don't lie. So I don't drink a lot of wine, but I did buy empathy and give it to my mom. I love you. <laughs> that's the answer, right? Like, if you, like, for me, all these fuck faces that are watching right now, the people that come here every day for the last five years get free content in perpetuity and yet still go to a BevMo or a Binnie's or an HEB or a Costco or mm. a Total Wine or go to wine.com and buy their wine, that's devastating. I want to break their face. Cue the wine text URL, Dustin. <laughs> but, but so many more than those people that somehow have not clicked yet to like, wait, I'm buying wine anyway. Why wouldn't I buy it from the person that's bringing me the most value yeah. in the world for free? Yeah. And, yeah. and so, but, but you have to have the stomach, like Dustin, put it back up. <laughs> but Dave, you have to have the stomach for people to let you down. Yeah. You know, like, like I know as I'm reading all these comments, people that have literally taken my stuff and made money and, and obviously Texas, Michigan, under 21, outside the US, you're all excluded. But there's people right now that are like, oh shit. Like genuinely, it just hit them finally. Even though they've watched for 60 days here, they're like, right, why Why would I buy from wine.com? Why mm. would I buy a Total Wine? Like yeah. why in the world would I not buy from Gary? And, and the best part is, I've had Wine Library the whole time. The reason I'm pushing Wine Tech so hard is because it's such a good deal. Yeah. And you can do the same thing. Yeah. You can, you can make such a good product that you believe in and 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 all that free content you put out led to all of them buying from you that way. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And I guess the last thing that I'll let you go is like the other thing that works really well in our world is I don't know if you have this on the on the media side is like people can get the information but they want to pay you to see how you apply it. They want to see you treat people. They want to see you actually coach people. So I feel like that probably is like that would sit the most well with me. It's like here it is for free. If you want to actually get my opinion then like that's cool. Love it. You cool. got it, Dave. Cool. Thanks man.
Two things real quick, a great question. What happened to yummy text? Yummy text, throw up yummy text in text. I know we don't have a logo for it. Uh, because of with COVID and everything, we're like on the verge of fully launching yummy text, but yummy text is uh, not is in beta still and with food and all this, we just kind of you know held off, but as soon as we kind of get back to some sort of normality. So yummy text is for food. Texas, Michigan, here's your chance, sign up for that. But real quick, don't sign up for yummy text or wine text unless you completely are going to buy from it because it costs money to send a text. So everybody who just signed up for wine text just now because they felt guilty, but you're not gonna buy wine, unsubscribe, it's super fine. I only want people that buy wine to sign up for it, you know? All right, but you should definitely sign up for wine text. It's a fucking crazy deal. I mean, today we're selling a $70 wine for 30. A big time one. Everyone selling for 70? We're selling for 30. Yesterday we sold a $13 rosé, you know, like, it's just fucking amazing. Anyway, nonetheless, let's keep it going. Yes, Colorado is in, Lauren. Hey. Alex, what's Oh my great? gosh, hi. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you so much for having me here. I'm really excited. I'm really it's great nervous. to have you, Alex. I have my mom right here. That's what's up, hi. <laughs> what's her Hello. name? Armides. Armides, so nice to meet you. Nice meeting you too. What's yeah, up, Alex? But I really like your trash talk show, just saying. I really like it. I appreciate it. Have you gone garage selling yet? Um, I, I'm planning to do that in the summer with my mom. I love it, once we get back to some normalcy. I love it. Yeah. What can, but, what can, I, what can I answer for you, bro? Yeah, I'm gonna like give a little like context about my question and stuff. Go ahead. And um, like, it's about TikTok. I have two questions. Uh, I started TikTok like a year ago. Like, I didn't really like, I wasn't really that like passionate about it like long ago and and that long ago and um my siblings like started it so I just got it for fun and things like that. Yep. And um I have uh I have ADHD and it's like it it ha it it comes with like a hard time controlling my emotions and things like that. Especially with like yeah. Especially with my like medication, it's like a side effect and things like that. But like TikTok, like usually I just scroll through it when I'm having like a bad day, and like it like helps me and it changes my whole mood. That makes me so happy, bro. And like when I like noticed that a few months ago, I noticed that I could do that for like people too, and mm -hmm. it like made me really happy. So then I just kept making videos every day and like. One comment that I got on my video said, like, it made their night. And I was, like, <laughs> so happy. I love that. I love you so for then, that. Yeah, I realized that I could, like, do that for people. But, like. Well, it's such a special gift. That's super precious. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud of yeah. you. Yeah. And then, like, the emo like the hard time controlling my emotions and stuff. Like, when I'm sad, I'm sad. But, like, it's hard to, like, get hate comments because I got, like, of like course. hate by my old friends that like used to be my friends. Understood. Yeah, but um Alex, can I tell you something about that? Yeah. When people leave hate on the internet, it means that they're hurting. Your quote unquote old friends, it just means that they're hurting inside too. And the manifestation of their own internal pain mm -hmm. is being left in your comments. Oh. That's you actually see, yeah. You see where I'm going? Mm-hmm. Instead of feeling bad for yourself when somebody leaves hate, you need to feel bad for them. Like compassion, like empathy. Like, like instead of being like hurt by them and being mad at them, you need mm -hmm. to say, why did Javier or why did Rick do that? And you say, damn, he's in a bad spot. Anybody who puts yeah. bad, anybody who puts bad into the world is actually hurting really bad inside, bro. That's true. Because why else would they do it then? That's right. They're trying to bring somebody else down because they're down. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you got nothing but sweetness and love in your heart, which is why you're trying to bring people up. Yeah. Can I ask you a huge important question? Mm -hmm. Why is your mom's tea mug so huge? Because <laughs> she's in the mug life. Let's go, mug life. That's what I was hoping you would say. Let's go, my guy. That's what I fuck with. Good shit, Alex. You do watch Trash Talk. I love that. But yeah, I have one more question. Go ahead. So like, I have like 
friends, right, that, like, are on TikTok, too. Yep. And, like, at least three of them have, like, I, I like, they, like, do, like, basically the same content that I put out. Okay. But, like, they get, like, a different response, you know? Like more, like, more comments, more followers, less, worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like they, they, Alex, they have like Alex. 100K yeah. and everything. And I'm hard, having a hard time comparing myself. With yeah, them. Alex, I promise you something right now. You want to get, re- you want to, you want to limit the amount of time you're sad. Let me promise you something right now. Giving a fuck about anybody else's account is mm-hmm. the worst move in the world. All right. Bro, they're happy. Be happy for them. You're a kind kid. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm happy for them, but it's stop, just like a little stop, stop. No, no, no comma, no comma. Like I'm happy for them, comma. Damn, I'm sad for me. I want to be there. It needs yeah. to be. It needs to be. It needs to be. I'm happy for them. Exclamation point. Okay. Yeah. You got me, bro. Mm-hmm. Listen to me. I'm gonna tell you something that I hope you watch over and over. There is nothing I'm more confident about than you're gonna win in life, bro. I see it I right through you. That. You got nothing but good. Thank you so much. You just have to be patient and believe. Don't worry about comparing. And by the way, you know, I don't want to pry into, this gets into more family stuff with you and what you're talking about, but I promise you, your, your thing is your gift, not your fucking weakness. Thanks. That energy leads to creativity, bro. I'm sure I have it. I just didn't grow up in the system when they used to test this heavy. Yeah. You understand? Mm-hmm. You have a gift, bro. If, if you do anything from this video, you take in your mind and you shift this thing, we all get sad, we all get happy, but I promise you, yeah. if you, if you don't compare, and if you feel bad for people that are like putting bad on you, if you feel compassionate and empathetic for them, like, bro, you're gonna win, bro. Appreciate that. You got the ingredients. Now you just gotta cook it. Yeah. You understand? Mm-hmm. Alex, I expect I expect you to tag me on your first trash talk TikTok video once this world opens Deal. up. Deal. Bet. All right, Gary. Yes, dear. I just wanna say something. Please. So I am so happy that I was able to find you and um, I introduced Alex to you. I kept sending him like clips and stuff about you and he finally caught into it. And, um, you know, sometimes kids and moms, they don't want to listen to what their mom really says because I've been telling him the same things that you say because I'm learning from you. Of course. So it, sometimes it takes somebody else to come in and, and get them, you know, click. And I, I really, I'm very happy that, that I found you so that I can, you know, help him through you. I couldn't. I, if I told you how emotional that just made me in my soul, I thank you so much for saying that. You don't even know what that means to me. Thank you. Alex, listen to me. We're going to be friends. You need to stay the course. I can't wait to be friends with you once you don't have to go to school all the time. Like, you know, all right. please do me a favor. Don't just make this a one moment thing. Take what mm-hmm. I said to you and put it into your soul. When people are leaving oh. bad comments or people are talking shit in real life, they're in a bad place. You need to be compassionate. Mm-hmm. When, other, when other people are winning, you need to be happy for them. Neither one, neither your friends that are winning or your old friends that are tearing you down, neither one of those people have anything to do with your life. You got a great yeah, mom, you got a great family, you got a great, great head of hair, you're cute as fuck, you're fucking, you got it figured out, bro, we got this. Awesome. All right, and you have to get me in the show too. I have some stuff that I want to talk about. <laughs> All right, talk to Dustin. He'll get you in, Mom. Okay. Right. We love you. Love you back. Take care, Thank everyone. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Whew. Love this shit. You know, this... Like, people spending all their time like focusing on what's bad in the world. And then you have that seven minutes. All right, let's get it going. Nick. Gary, what's up, man? It's always tough this to follow is... up the kid. I know, it is. Uh, <laughs> it's hard not to compare yourself in that you're that young and stuff, too. There's so much societal pressure and stuff. And, Bro, it's, it's, hard to, uh, it's, it's hard to not compare yourself at 53. I'm, I compare myself to 30 now, so, you know, yeah. I get it. It's just so hard when you're surrounded by that. But um, I just want to say you're an absolute legend. Honestly, I... The way of your words, as you can tell, even with them, it, it just means so much to a lot of people. And you help so much uh, with, 
us going through this pandemic, you know, outside of this, everything, like I've been following you for a long time. This is honestly an honor. So thank you. Brother. I appreciate it. Um, I'll give you a small background. Um, I live in Portland, Oregon. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I'm currently doing PPC marketing um, at the moment. Um, right after high school, I ended up going to college actually for computer science and then graphic design. And then I changed my major again. I ended up dropping out after a couple of years because honestly, I just went because my mom wanted me to and I wanted to make her proud. Um, so the only, re you know, the only reason I went to college and fucking played video yeah. games and fucking gambled and went to the track and fucking <laughs> went garage sales and Toys R Us. Paid, I paid off every kid in Toys R Us in like every, I went to 10 different Toys R Us in the Boston, you know, you know, Newton, Needham, like the area and literally paid off all the employees to keep all the starting lineup and Star Wars and Power Ranger and Spice Girl figures in the back. And then I would do, do a, like literally all day when I was supposed to be in class, would drive around, you know, and pick up all the toys that they kept in the back for me that I would then sell on early eBay for like 80 bucks a figure when I would buy them for seven ninety nine. That was my That's class. crazy. Yeah, um, I did photography actually as a part-time thing to kind of get myself through and whatnot. But to be honest with you, I didn't know what I wanted to do. It was photography, graphic design, computer were, science, were, stuff like that. Creative, you were a creative kid just trying to figure it out. I get it. So I, I went into retail management right after that because I did retail before that. So I went into the more kind of management side of it and then uh, went into IT. Um, that's what I thought I wanted to do. Um, turns out I don't like looking at a computer screen 24 seven and my eyeballs drying out and just coding and doing all that stuff. So, um, I kind of put the things together where I love people, I love interacting, I love helping and I love analytics and, and stuff. So I was like marketing, that's what I want to do. Yeah, man. If you love math and art and people, you're fucking, you got the, you got the juice. Exactly. So, uh, with that said, I was able to kind of get an entry level PPC marketing job and everything that didn't require a degree. Um, and I wanted my foot in that. I wanted to make sure, you know, not only this is for sure what I want to do, but really get an idea of um, this is my career Nick. path going. I apologize, Nick. Hey, Dustin. Yeah. Can you queue up the full Joe Rogan clip where I even predict how much money it's going to go for? Um, yeah. I, could, we, I, could, I could pull it from your Twitter, I think. And then like play it in here at at the end. Can we like cue it up? Yeah, I'll see. I'll uh, I'll start play, working play. on it. All right, go ahead, Nick. I apologize. Just had a thought. No, you're good. Uh, that's crazy, by the way. It's got to be an enormous amount of money he's going to take to go well, over it's, there. It's being, Anyways, report, it's being uh, reported that it's a hundred million. And there's an interview I gave last year where I literally threw out that exact number. No way. Yeah. Like you see I, this clip. Anyway, keep going. Um. So anyways, doing PPC marketing, uh, been doing it for three years. I love my company, honestly, the culture, the CEOs are great and stuff. But what I've realized doing just the PPC end of everything is I want to do more and I want to help these small businesses because I do businesses anywhere from, you know, a staff of one where it's just the owner to 50. Um, so it's rather just the, the ground up or people that really are just kind of starting and stuff. And what I've realized is that even though I'm their PPC uh, marketing person, they need a lot more. They need a lot more ideas on brand, identity, messaging. Um, how, where do I go from here? What do I do for my organic content and stuff like that? I've taught myself a lot of things outside of just kind of the Google ad side of things to you're be more, able to- You're multi-dimensional and you don't want to be pigeonholed yeah. and either you have to do it by yourself or you have to expand within New York. Right, exactly. And and the problem is is that we have departments for every type of medium and stuff. Right. So so, so the Renaissance man, the Swiss Army knife doesn't fit the mold of the infrastructure. Yeah, and, and I want to grow at this point and, and, and I am moving up, you know, I'm doing an interim uh, lead thing right now and stuff and I really appreciate my job and everything, but it doesn't spark the fire in me like that I have to really go above and beyond for businesses and be able to do a lot more. Um, so I have an actually a couple scenarios I want to run by you. One, I actually have a pretty good relationship with the CEO and he sees a lot in, in me that he sees in himself and stuff. Uh, and what I want to do essentially is kind of pitch him because he's created yes. the jobs within next. our organization. Yes. Next. Okay. It's going to work. By um, the way. On the record, it's going to work. The, on the record, okay. it's going to work based on the culture, based on the, I want to meet this CEO. Like he sound, he, you said, uh, yeah. He sounds fucking awesome. Great culture, making yeah. up jobs. He sounds like fucking, like has a lot of like the same points of view I have. I like him. I think you would get along with him. I'll, I'll send 
the information to Dustin. I, I want it private right now, but um, I'll send it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, you know, first go have that pitch because maybe he yeah. turns into a dragon and then I don't want to be his friend. He, he's a good guy. Um, Clearly. The second option is I, I think this is the goal of a lot of people that just work for an agency is I want to do all marketing for one company. Um, or be like a marketing director for one company or brand or a certain industry even. Like I do industries anywhere from like retail to service to uh, CNC machines and stuff like that. And some of it, I have like a true passion for and stuff. Would you move? It, it's just like, yeah, absolutely. Nick, send me an email. A real one. Okay. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Scary um, can and I get... That's what I'm taking okay. care of it. Um, Dude, if you actually, I'm taking everything back. If you have to write down Gary at BainerMedia.com, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm actually writing down, you know, just kind of snippets and stuff for myself yeah, from yeah, the first thing. scenario, joking, second scenario. I know, yeah. Um, and plus, everybody learns differently. Like, I can't write down every, anything. And then I, I'm actually fascinated by the process of writing things down. I think it's kind of cool. I repeat it in my head without even moving my lips and that's how I remember things. Yeah. But if I wrote it down, um, I'd be dead. I'm gonna watch this 20 times over, honestly, but for some reason it's, the good, it's, it's the a good thing news where is, you write it you down too. And... Nick, you don't even need to watch this 20 times over. Let me recap it for you. Yes. Like literally right on your pad right now, capital Y, capital E, capital S. That's it, brother. That, that, if, if, you know, that is maybe what I'm gonna end up putting on my gravestone. Like what I'm teaching and what I'm trying to convey is 98% of people watching this right now live in no and I live in yes. Yeah. You're so uncomfortably obviously talented. I mean it. Like, Thank like you. I, I think I want you to work for Vayner Media. Or, or <laughs> there's 30 different jobs I can put you in if you wanna go brand side. But like, yeah. Like, you just need to believe in yes. The answer is yes to everything. All right. and, and then when yeah. it's yes, talk to the boss and create a job. Yes, start my own thing. Yes, go brand side. Literally, and I'm not kidding, you're gonna love this. Flip a fucking coin or throw a dart because you'll never know the alternative. All three are good. Let me give you an example. Yeah. Let's just play this out because it's gonna help so many people. You're at a crossroads right now and it's not even one dimensional crossroads, it's like a three legged stool. Do I triple down on where I'm at, things are good, go talk to boss and create this cool role and fucking build? Do I take Gary up on it and go to Boehner? Do I, do I have Gary help me become the digital brand director at Bojangles because he sits on the board and I moved to North Carolina? Let's play it out. Mm -hmm. Let's say when you get to heaven, this is my dream of heaven, that it can show you every scenario of how things would have played out. And what you ended up doing was you came and worked with me. And, and that worked. You worked on Team Gary for three years. It built up your profile. You then, you felt, you, you met the, are you married? No, I'm Good. single. Good. You found the, the, the love of your life. You had a great family. You're in the Jersey suburb. Then you take that platform. Let's go even crazier. Like I did with Nate and Trout. I bring you into a brand. You know, six years later, now you own 5% of a coffee brand. You're the CMO. We're doing it. And now we sell it to Nestle for $200 million and you're only 46 years old. But when you fly to Nestle to close the deal, as we're doing the celebratory dinner, you choke on a chicken bone and you die. Right? Like I'm, mm -hmm. That's literally how I think about life. You could have right. went to Bojangles. All the shit I said for the first 90% of that story wasn't as good. You did great. You made 150,000 a year, you loved Charlotte. It was good. You, you also find another love of your life, you know, like, and you live this great life and you live to 92 and have great, four great, you know, grandchildren and this and that and the other thing. You just don't know. Yeah, and, and I, I just don't want to live my life with any type of regret. Like, I, at the same time, I'm not wasting my time, too, because I'm learning so much. Because I do connect with these organizations within our uh, overall umbrella, learn a lot more about SEO you're website, you're, you know, Facebook, you're, you're you know, all that. So you're, you're winning. You just need to make decisions and jump in and not look back and just do yeah. that forever. 
I, I think my biggest hurdle, you know, just kind of looking at things and I've dabbled with it. I haven't really explored it a lot is a lot of those, you know, bigger marketing roles and stuff says degree required and like experience. No, dude, in- that just, you know, you're too good. Like, like just reach out and say, I don't have it. Many are going to say yes. And degree required okay. is going to go away and fuck them. Yeah. Um, one uh, little thing too is, you know, like for one, example, of, one of the many not required at Vayner, you know, as we continue to dominate, more firms are going to do that because they're going to copy. Mm-hmm. How's uh, Rocker doing with esports and everything? I, I, I asked that because that's another industry that I'm interested in just in general. Um, and I haven't heard a yeah. bit so, in a while. Yeah. I mean, Call of Duty League is going really well. Um, you know, obviously I'm in quite in enjoying being a minority owner of an esports team, Minnesota Rocker. Uh, make sure you, you follow them on all socials, uh, R-O-K-K-R, K-K-R. Uh, it's going really well. Like, you know, it's, it's, a, you know tra- it's a first year. We were doing in-person events so that we had to do some adjustments. Um, but, but the reality is I'm learning a lot. It's a great space. I'm really into esports. That's good to hear, Gary. Uh, thank you for everything. Appreciate I mean, uh, it's yes in my head, but sometimes it's just like the mom where it's, you just need to hear it from the game. Uh, no, no, Gary no, you're going to appreciate and... this. You, 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 like many people 30 and above, put a degree on a pedestal, grew up in an era where it meant something, and mm-hmm. you have an insecurity around not having it, and I'm trying to pull that shit off your chest. Yeah. It me- when I tell you it means zero, it means zero. Yeah, if I get my foot in the door and at least get an interview, I can prove myself. I just want to get that opportunity, you know, and instead of it being auto rejected because I don't click mark the box that says I have a degree, you know, if I get the opportunity, I've always been able to proceed. But bro, then just reach out cold to the CEO and tell him why you're <laughs> you're not going out. That would, dude. Yes, remember? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Tattoo that shit. Can I get a follow on Instagram you from can. you, Nick Zada? You got it. All right, let's yeah. Keep it going. Thank you. Gary, for everything. You got it, brother. All right, let's keep it going. (laughs) Gary V, thank you so much, man. Dude, I'm so excited. Man, oh, fuck. Uh, So I'll just just get right into it. Um, I'm pretty sure we're probably going to come back to patience. I feel that patience has been, you know what I mean, the slogan of the show at this point. Uh, Even on the coattails of Nick, you know, like I'm four years out of grad school. um, But it's my question kind of revolves down to like pushing, like pushing through grief. Uh, My my first semester of grad school, I lost my mom. Um, and that was kind of like a huge thing. Like I used it very much as my driver. Like I use it to create, uh, that body of work. Uh, that was my, uh, my master's thesis. Um, I, I write about her a lot. Uh, I pretty much have like a pretty fleshed out transcript of, of poems that are like super grief heavy, but they're totally about her. Um, friends of mine were, uh, my birthday is always super close to Mother's Day. So like last week was just like a fucking shit week just because it, it weighs up like. Dude, it's, it's, it's one of the most difficult events in a human's life, even when they're 80, let alone when they're at this age. I'm so, uh, so, I'm so sorry you went through that. My mom lost her mom at five. And, and I feared, and my dad lost his dad at 15. And so my whole life, I feared losing my parents. And it was such a big thing in our culture. And people died very early in the Soviet Union. And, um, and uh, I just have a lot of empathy for you, bro. It's a real thing. Thank you. Um, you know, like, and I've lived through it with, with my dad and my, my godmother, who's my aunt, uh, where, you know what I mean, they lost their mom when I was in undergrad. So like I've kind of like seen like the different stages of it, you know, uh, but it's 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 completely different like that. Just depending on like how you you know what I mean, how you grew up. Like my mom was the one who raised me. My dad was working all the time. Same. Like he worked second Same. second and third shift. So Same. you know like and then even when he was home, he was still working. So like I completely Same. empathize with that. But 
my mom was the one who raised me. And even though she was never like my biggest cheerleader, like I'm, I'm first generation Filipino American. Uh, even when like I would bring my mom to like my art shows, she would always be like, why do you do stuff this way? Why is your work so dark? Like what, like she would always like question what I was doing. And I know like she would, she would support me like in, in perpetuity, but she was always just like, Chipping. you know what I mean? Especially like, total, total chip. Yeah, and I, 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 I didn't have that. My grandma did that for me. My mom, my dad's mom, cause she was around a lot. Um, but my mom was like, I would sneeze and my mom would be like, that's one of the great sneezes of all time. So I had the reverse of that a little bit. Uh, and uh, shout out to uh, my friend Becky. It's, it's her birthday today. But uh, one thing that she was kind of like talking to me about on my birthday was like, you know, like you'll proceed through this grief forever. Of and course. there's, you know what I mean? There are still going to be days that like hit you like a Mack truck, like out of the blue. There's nothing anybody can really like say to you. It's, it's, it's still just your pursuit of, of this thing that is with you forever. And there are just like sometimes that, uh, you know what I mean? I try to like not think about like if she's, pr you know what I mean? If hypothetically she you, is you, proud bro. of me or, uh, bro, bro, this is the one of the most difficult things, Andy, to get through. You know, like, but there is no time machines. Absolutely, and, and that's like kind of like the other thing. Like, I feel that sometimes, like, even though like I'm I'm pushing like with my art, and you know, uh, I think it was uh, earlier this week where you were talking about like, dude, sometimes that W is gonna kill you. And like, I sold like one big piece, like from my, my master's show. And that was like the pretty much like my biggest debut as far as like that part of my life. And how much did it sell for? Uh, it sold for four grand. Woo. That's fucking go. Uh, but you know what I mean? It's, it's constantly been trying to, you know what I mean? Still stay within like that. Then now there's this established market value. And uh, that's, a, that's a huge play. It's a huge play and you know what I mean? It's, it's a play that can be made when, you know what I mean? You're showing in Boston where that show was, or like if you're showing in New York, but you know, I'm from, like I live in uh, New Bedford, Massachusetts and do I love, I love this community so fucking much. Like Kristen being Kristen, like it's so much fun to like watch and chop it up with. Uh, I was chatting with Curtis last night about just this and like, Mike's dating show is super good. Like, dude, this community that you have created and that everybody is so dialed into is just huge. So, like, thank you so much for this. Um, is there anything yeah, I can man. help with? Like, what, like, like, where, like, is it, are you just trying to navigate the grief? That's, that's essentially where, like, I'm sorry you know, if I went not, a little no, over, no, all over the map. You didn't go all over the map. You, you, you went to your truth. I love your truth. I'm all over the map 24 seven, listen to me. The reality of this is this, you had a mom that brought you so much value and you had her for 20 something years, right? Yeah. And that, you know, 70, I would argue 50 to 70% of people don't have mothers that bring them value, they brought them negative value. Then with the remaining 20, uh, 30 to 40% of people that did have great moms that brought them value, another 25% of those people lost their mom earlier than you did. Absolutely. Where like, Dan, you know, like Daniel brought that up, that he lost his mom super early, lost his grandmother super early. And I was really hoping that he was like gonna dive into it. And then I was like, oh. Dude, dude, there's, there's no di <laughs> there Yo bro, what's that, what's that hat? It's a rocker hat, man. This, this is what we do. Appreciate you so much, bro. Listen to me. The reality is, is when I hear you talk, you're coming from such a light. It's funny when you said your art is so dark because you're dealing with this darkness with light. Even the way Where you're, it's, you're, the way and, you're and it's funny that uh, the way you're communicating this heavy, heavy-hearted situation is actually with enormous gratitude. I can feel it under your words. Thank you. Where, where it's funny because like I was kind of just like front loading my Instagram just in case like you know hypothetically if uh, uh, Dustin was gonna bring it up on on the show like I just loaded like a whole boatload of paintings <laughs> up there 
Um, well, listen, you know, just it's good, man. Like, I want to take a look at it before before I let you go here, bro. Listen to me. It's gonna be there forever, and it's gonna be better every single day. That's Thank just, you. That is the historic truth. You know what I mean? And you know what I, I mean? Just, like, I'm on TikTok. I'm you, on. I'm five, Thank I'm, you. I'm your I'm your five eighteenth. Dude, this is huge. This is yeah. so huge. You know, uh, I mean, you know, this is about to go to fifteen hundred, right? Oh man, I, like for for what everybody that's been on this show, like that has really taken this moment. That like it's it's immense for what it can do for us and like what it can do bro, for your. Whoa, bro, your stuff is really interesting. Thank you so much, dude. What's up with the Magic the Gathering cards? You got some, dude? I'm like flip life, baby. Like. It's it's what we're it's what we're doing. I just I just bought a box that like I'm gonna do an unboxing video on Twitch, and you know what I mean. Like start flipping cards and like that's that's been a huge part of my life. Like I've Dude, I've been your 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 food content's pretty good too. Thank you so much. Like uh, we're fight like side note. Uh, where where we're, are you on your nutrition? I see you working out, but you got a little gut like me. Oh yeah, dude. My like it's dude. Pandemic life has been like pandemic 15 <laughs> is hard. <laughs> pandemic 15 makes freshman 15 seem amateur. I'm with you on uh, that. Yeah. Man. Dude, especially like especially like being in your 30s, you know what I mean? It's all like yeah, you, you don't you don't you're you're not, don't, you're, you don't you're cut not your teens down the same. anymore. Yeah, you're not a teenager no more. That shit hits. Oh man. That shit but, hits. But uh do you like like my mom like the biggest thing that my mom gave to me was was learning how to cook and loving food. Uh, so like, I know that art was my passion. And so like, I leaned into it. I have a master's in painting and, you know, like a boatload of debt that goes along with that. Like I thought that I was going to be, you know what I mean? Teaching college or whatever, but it just, that just didn't end up being the route for me. And that's fine. Um, Dude, so think, you know what I mean? How much, how much debt do you have? Are you willing to fall? Are you willing to share? Uh, over a hundred K like <laughs> it is. <laughs> I was going to try, I was going to try to get the, the Vayner nation right now to go and DM you to buy all your art and take you directly out of debt. But that's a fucking beast of no, a number. No, dude, it's, it's, dude, it's, even getting on this show, dude, it's a war of attrition. And I'm, 100%. I'm dude, fucking patience. I'm totally, I'm totally well, with Andy, it. Like this. Andy, this has been a great show because you, the little man. Uh, dude, little man, yeah. like, warmed my heart. I was smiling so hard because, you know what I mean? Especially, like, with his mom, with the, with, like, and that they're going to go garage sailing. I'm, like, I, I know. Andy. immensely, like, appreciative of them. Listen to me. I really think off the springboard of this moment, because your 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 art is real, real good. Thank I think you. There's a real shot you can get out of debt in the next year, even with an economic slowdown. I just think all your shit is minimum four thousand dollars now, minimum. And I think I think you can stunningly sell twenty five to my community alone and be out. I'm not kidding. I think you're about to get the weirdest DMs of your life. I'm with it. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm willing to, you know what I mean? Drive everything everywhere. No shit, and... Andy, of course you're fucking with it. Oh wait, you're, <laughs> you're with it. If the Vader nation <laughs> hits you up and is offering you 5,000 a piece and 20 of them sell no shit. You're with it. Dude, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. If nobody asked me for anything right now, you know what That's I mean? That's like... what's up, man. That, that I know. That's exactly where I was going to say, listen, bro, you fucking won. You know, you won. You know, you got all the fucking pieces. You had a fucking shit thing happen. We all have shit things happen that will be Absolutely. everyone's life to the end but you have so much blessings you have so much fucking good start fucking building thank you like you're welcome i love everything that you're you're that you're giving in perpetuity dude i got the the empathy tri pack because like i wanted to support you uh i dropped i dropped some money onto all in dude, challenge do me, a, do me a favor no more money for me until we're out of that hundo i mean it absolutely no more no more fucking hats no more fucking wine <laughs> no more all in challenge Unless the raffle ticket's kind of cool. If you won, it could be cool. Well, the ra you know what I mean? Your yours is done. Like, that's that's all I was... Because, believe me, if I got to spend support, that year bro, with you, I, I'd, I'd be... Yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> listen to me. Listen to me. I appreciate it to no end. But I need to get out of that hundo first. And then we'll get back to, you know, wine text and other shit like that. I really appreciate you, bro. You've got a great heart. This is... I appreciate you, bro. I really, really... Thank you so much. Day. Listen. I really think this was a special... Dustin, this had like a sweet in it. This was like a sweet fucking show. Yeah. Like, don't, I mean, I don't understand how people don't understand. Like, this is like the fucking sweetest place on earth. What don't you understand about that? <laughs> that, um, 
that I'm fascinated by, I'm, I'm trying to think about all the people that misread me up front. Oh, gotcha. That aren't taking advantage of this free content. And then I'm not understanding, like, I'm like, fuck, who am I misreading? What am I misreading? I th- Watch this, Dustin, in the comments. Hey, everybody watching, how many of you, the first one to two to three, even four times that you saw me or heard people talking about me, thought I was a complete con artist, full of shit, fuck this guy, charlatan, wait, he's gonna sell me something at the end. How many people, just say me, me in the comments. Watch this, Dustin. Here they come. Look at that. Honestly, I really, I didn't think that when I first discovered you. I really didn't, like, I don't know, maybe I'm naive. (laughs) Or, or 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 maybe your intuition's good. Or maybe it was the piece of content, right? It all depends what piece of content. True. He cusses too much, somebody said, right? Like, that affects people. Look at all these me. It's a couple of not me's. <laughs> well, there's a couple. No, some people are the worst. Watch this. Uh, now, instead of me, if the first piece of content, you were like, oh my God, reply now and put my guy. Reply my guy. If right away you saw this like, this is my guy, let's see, let's see that. That's how I was. But for me, I think it was just because the first time I heard you, I, you said you were from Edison, New Jersey. And I was like, oh, cool, Jersey guy. <laughs> <laughs> what what piece of content? Do you remember the first piece of content you saw? Yeah, it, well, heard. It was when you were on Elvis Elvis Duran. Duran. Yeah, Dur- that was you the heard first. on the fucking radio? Yeah, I was, I was driving to work and I heard it. I was Hold like, on, Dustin. Hold on. You're telling me right now. So wait. When that piece of content, like, I don't know, have you ever worked with that piece of content or do we ever yeah. post it? I, I always go back to it. <laughs> when I first started working for you, I always, like, I. Just, like the first like, day you were at Vayner, did you, like, so wait, I, you I didn't heard, go into that you one. You heard first, me, but... no, I understand. You heard me on Elvis Durand mm-hmm. where I talked about, like, don't hate your job. Yeah. And then you literally ended up having a job with me? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, like, quit my job the f- next day or anything, but, like, I think then one of my friends reshared like an old keynote on Facebook. And then I was like, oh, it's that guy again. And then, and then it just went and from now, there. And now you're a fucking international superstar. The whole fucking tea community is upset. You're more popular than I am. Yeah, right. I love you, bro. You got the, uh, you too. got the Rogan piece? Uh, yeah. And you, so you can load it and load in the Gary BTV thing? Yeah. Okay. And we did the big wine text thing today. Premium wine. Uh, here's a good one. If you want to buy a Father's Day gift, I'm selling a $70 wine for like 33 bucks today, 32 bucks, 34 bucks. Um, so Father's Day gift, highly recommend today's wine. Your pops will go nuts for two bottles of this if he's a wine drinker. So thank you for all of my guys. I appreciate all the people that said me who persevered and, and came over. So I really appreciate you guys. I really appreciate you guys a lot. Um, Couple things you're about to see. Uh, you're gonna put both of them, or you're just gonna do one? Uh, I could do both. Cool. Um, actually, let's just you know, Gary V TV. Just put up that right now. Um, we don't need to play that thing. I think we played the Rogan piece because I think people are gonna be blown away. If you had, if you haven't heard yesterday, first of all, if you have Twitter, sign up for this right now. It's fucking amazing. Um, and then number two, uh, we're about to play you a clip. I put on my Instagram yesterday, but not the full clip. The team cut it a certain way, but then later it came out that it's reported. Uh, through somebody close to the sources that it's a hundred million dollars that Rogan got to go exclusive to Spotify. Watch this. Watch, big shout out to CK Escamila. She said she'll buy three right now for a shout out. Boom. She's gonna buy three, I sold three Brunello already today, Dustin. Um, This is me. uh, If you follow me closely, I've been talking about the Rogan thing over and over and over and over again. But here's one clip where I even took it to the next level and threw out a number, I think it's gonna blow your mind. Thanks everybody, we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, nice. I like this, can we watch together? Yeah. Attention always eventually gets monetized. When Joe Rogan inevitably announces that he paid $100 million to exclusively be on whatever pop platform he's gonna go on. I have an announcement. The podcast is moving to Spotify. It will become exclusive to Spotify. So I think when Rogan inevitably does Howard Stern 2.0, I think you'll start seeing people realize, oh, there is something here. And I think people are very basic. They they look for a report or a very simple ad product 
to make them feel good yeah. while underestimating when tens of millions of people are paying attention to something, inevitably there's an opportunity to monetize. Like I said in that clip, the reason I knew is this is how the world works. Like you build up traction in all platforms and if you're at the tippy top like the Rogan is, you then have the leverage to go exclusive somewhere and extract enormous dollars. It's a big deal, I guarantee you got a real, real check. Congrats, Joe, you worked hard for that. For everybody else who's aspiring, get into all platforms, get out there, build leverage, and then reverse that leverage.